This video is about the brief history of computing starting from the early period of computers up to the present. Early computers were only conceived as calculating devices. Since ancient times, simple manual devices like the abacus aided people in doing calculations. On the 17th century, a famous Scottish mathematician, John Napier, invented logarithms as a way to simplify difficult mathematical computations. A logarithm is a mathematical operation that determines how many times a certain number, called the base, is multiplied by itself to reach another number. One of John Napier's most significant contributions was a Napier's bones. Still under the 17th century, the first slide rule appeared in 1622 by William Outred. The slide rule is used primarily for multiplication and division and also for functions such as exponents, roots, logarithms, and trigonometry, but typically not for addition or subtraction. William Altred also invented many new symbols including X for multiplication and a double colon for proportion. And on the 1642, Blaise Pascal designed and built a mechanical calculator named the Pascaline. Pascaline is a direct adding machine. It has no crank, so the value of a number is added to the accumulator as it is being dialed in. On the 1673, Gottfried Leibniz constructed a mechanical calculator called the Leibniz wheel. Leibniz tried to combine principles of arithmetic with the principles of logic and imagined the computer as something more of a calculator. He discovered also that computing processes can be done much easier with a binary number coding. 17th century devices could represent numbers, could perform arithmetic operation on numbers, but they didn't have a memory to store information. They were not also programmable, which means a user could not provide a sequence of actions to be executed by the device. On the 19th century, Joseph Jacquard designed an automated loom that used punch cards to create patterns. The Jacquard loom is important to computer history because it is the first machine to use interchangeable punch cards to instruct a machine to perform automated tasks. Next is Herman Hollerith, an American businessman who designed and built programmable card processing machines to read, tally, and sort data on punch cards for the U.S. Census Bureau. Herman Hollerith also founded a company that became IBM or International Business Machines in 1924. Next is we have the Luddites, the people who originally opposed to the new manufacturing technology introduced by the Jacquard loom. Now, Luddites' term is used to describe any group that is frightened or angered by the latest developments in any branch of science and technology, including computers. Next is we have Charles Babbage, the one who originated or created the concept of a digital programmable computer. The difference engine that was designed and built in 1823 was an automatic mechanical calculator that could do addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to six significant digits. It could also solve polynomial equations and other complex mathematical problems. The analytical engine was a proposed mechanical general-purpose computer by Charles Babbage. The analytical engine was a mechanical programmable machine with parts that mirror of our modern computer. Like MIL for the ALU or arithmetic logic unit, store for memory, operator for the processor, and the output unit for the input and output. 19th century devices were mechanical but not electrical. It had many features in common with our modern computer, like representation of numbers or other data, operations to manipulate the data, memory to store values in a machine-readable form, and programmable wherein sequences of instructions could be pre-designed for complex operations. Next is we have here the Harvard Mark I or Mark I computer in 1944. Mark I was an electromechanical computer which used a mix of relays, magnets, and gears to process and store the data. It was originally called the Automatic Sequence Controlled Calculator by IBM. It was a room-sized relay-based calculator. Next is the Colossus in 1943, a general-purpose computer built by Alan Turing for the British Enigma Project. 
Colossus was the first large-scale electronic computer built during the World War II from over 1,700 valves or tubes. Next is the ENIAC in 1946 or the Electronic Numerical Integrator and Calculator. ENIAC was the first publicly known fully electronic computer which was built out of nearly 17,500 vacuum tubes, 7,200 diodes, and many miles of wire. Now let's go ahead and talk about John von Neumann. John von Neumann proposed a radically different computer designed based on a model called the Stored Program Computer. A research group at the University of Pennsylvania built one of the first stored program computers called EDVAC or Electronic Discrete Variable Automatic Computer in 1949. UNIVAC-1 or Universal Automatic Computer, which was a version of EDVAC, was the first commercially sold computer. Now let's go ahead and talk about the generation of computer. Computers during 1950 to 1957 were considered to be the first generation of computers. Similar to EDVAC, these computers used vacuum tubes for processing and storage. These computers were very large, expensive, and delicate, and even required trained users and special environments. The UNIVAC and ENIAC are examples of first generation of computers. These types of computers used a great deal of electricity and generated a lot of heat. Next is a second generation of computers. Computers under 1957 to 1965 were considered as the second generation of computers. Computers in this generation used transistors and magnetic cores instead of vacuum tube, allowing these computers to become smaller, faster, cheaper, more energy efficient, and more reliable. It was the era of Fortran and COBOL which were some of the first high-level programming languages. In this generation, punch cards and magnetic tape were used for input, punch cards and papers were used for output, and magnetic tape was used for storage. Now let's go to the third generation of computers. Computers in this generation from 1965 to 1975 were considered as era of integrated circuit and the birth of the first mini computer. Computers in this generation are no longer room-sized but desk-sized, in which keyboards were used for input, monitors for output, and hard drives were used for storage. Now let's move on to the fourth generation of computers from 1975 to 1985. The microprocessor brought the fourth generation of computers as thousands of integrated circuits were built into a single silicon chip. A microprocessor is used in any computer for any logical and arithmetic function to be performed in any program. These microcomputers are making use of the graphical user interface or GUI technology and embedded systems. Fourth generation of computers became more powerful, compact, reliable, and affordable. Next is the fifth generation of computers from 1985 up to the present. Computers in this generation have been using massively parallel processors that are capable of quadrillions of computations per second. Computers are now available in different sizes and unique features just like the handheld digital devices. A lot of devices also nowadays have powerful multimedia user interfaces and are capable of wireless communications. Some of the characteristics of fifth generation of computing devices are having an ultra-high resolution graphics, massive cloud storage devices, ubiquitous computing which means computing is made to appear at any time and everywhere, virtual reality and AI or artificial intelligence like robots and some popular virtual assistants like Siri, Alexa, and Cortana. And in the future, our computers may be much more different such as having optical computers, tiny computers that utilize nanotechnology, and general purpose computers that are built into our everyday devices. Look up to the sky to the brighter days In our eyes there is a revolution Soon there will no longer be pollution Shining by the light of the day